All right, so now that we have the classic version of the character done, let's move on to the more rendered looking version of Cecilia. I'm gonna take you step by step on how to do that. And the technique that I'm gonna be using is using a soft edge brush and working from large scale to small scale. And this is a technique that's used by a lot of artists when they wanna block out the shapes and the different uh, concepts first and then work smaller into the detailing later on. So you work large and then small, and that's true for the brush as well. So starting off, I'll be working primarily with a larger brush, and then as I continue working, my brush size will get smaller and smaller to the point where I'm getting into like the finer detailing, and that's when my brush size is really small. So from that point, I shouldn't be having to go back to my large brush at all. And the one other thing I want to uh, create with you guys first before we jump into coloring this is creating a grayscale color mode and to do that, it's really simple. So if you go on to your layers menu here, go all the way to the bottom and then choose the hue. Oh, you can't see it. Let me move it up. So these, the thing that's like a half circle where it's half light, half dark, it's a new adjustment layer. So if you click it and then choose hue and saturation, pretty much it'll affect all of the layers underneath of it and this little sub menu will come up. So the submenu, all I want to do is change my saturation from 0 to minus 100. And you can see how everything in the actual uh, canvas has turned into grayscale. And there's a reason for this. And this is so that we can see our values more clearly. Because sometimes when you work strictly with color right from the get-go, sometimes the values can get kind of lost and muddled. But you want to make sure that you are having a contrast not only in your hues, but in your values as well. And with an animated character, since there's not usually a very direct, harsh lighting, sometimes the values can become uh, too consistent with each other, and you want there to be some contrast. And the best thing about this layer adjustment is that you can just turn it on and off, and it won't affect all of the actual layers that you have underneath of it. It'll just kind of give you a preview of what it looks like in grayscale. So sometimes I have this up whenever I'm working on anything realistic, but mostly when I start in color, this is the kind of uh, adjustment layer that you want to have on hand that you can always, you know, kind of see what your grayscale values are. All right, so let's get going with coloring her. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that hue and saturation layer off so that I can more clearly see the colors that I'm choosing. So there's already a new layer underneath of that sketch layer. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding the colors underneath of the sketch. And that's so that we can kind of see uh, the proportions that we've already created in the line work and then lay out our colors based on that. So on this new layer, I'm going to be color picking from the original Cecilia render I did. But as I pick it, you can see how the color picker will change with it. So you can kind of see where on the value range and on the hue range and the saturation where it's placed. So for the skin, I wanted to do something that had more of a yellow hue to it, and that's so that I could pop out the reds when I lay them on the nose and the cheeks. So it's a very basic, you know, skin color. And all the colors I'm going to make, I'm going to go ahead and just place them up here as well. as kind of like my Cecilia color palette. And then I'll make an, a dot .abr so that if you want to use the same colors, you can go ahead and download the color palette from this. So that is my just neutral skin color. And then I also have my shadow skin color and then my half shadow skin color. That's what I'm gonna call it. So the half shadow is areas that where like it falls under the hair, but there's still a lot of light that's bouncing and hitting back up. So let's go ahead and add that kind of around the head, but not really pushing it too far into the actual face too much and just lay out where you know like the basic shadows would go so this is almost like if you know 3d it's like an occlusion uh, ambient shadow and just very very light nothing too defined then right here I just I alt color picked the original skin color and I am just pushing that shadow back just a tad so I don't want it to be too overwhelming, especially starting off. I just want it to be very light and just give a hint of where the shadows will end up going. And then the other skin color is the shadow skin color. So this is for any of the shadows that 
uh, will be almost in pure shadow. So underneath of where the head is, there isn't going to be that much bounce lighting, but I'm still going to add just a touch so that there's some sort of a gradient to it. It's not just completely dark under there. Something like that. And I know it may seem very dark, but you have to kind of trust your instincts on where you're placing the shadows and the color that you're choosing. Because you can see on the color picker, it's still not that dark. It's only about halfway down my value range. It just looks so much darker because it's in contrast to this original skin color, which if we look on the color picker, is very high on the value range. And the other thing is that you may notice that the, from the original skin color to the shadow skin color, it also went down in the hue. It went from more of a orangish to more of a red. And that's because usually when I uh, bend my colors toward light or shadow, I bend my shadows toward purple and I bend my lights toward yellow. So in this case, since it's my shadow, I'm slowly bending it to, to purple by going down the red. And then from here, I'm going to go ahead and lay out my eyeball color. And the one thing, oops, there we go. So now when laying out my eyeball color, I always talk about how never use pure whites for the actual uh, cornea of the eye, and that's the white part. But I say that in quotes, air quotes, I guess, because the only thing that I think should be in pure white on the actual eyeball is the reflection that usually falls somewhere on the top surface of the iris. So here I'm just laying out a quick kind of gray eyeball, and then I'll give it just slight roundness by adding a hint of white to it but not pure white because otherwise we'd be getting like this and you can see how that's too defined as white so just enough where it, it looks more rounded out as an eyeball and then for the actual iris color I'm gonna go ahead and grab this really really dark it's almost black and this is pretty much to really define the character's iris and to show where um, the pupil and the bottom color will be. So I really want a lot of the attention to be on the eyes, so having this very stark contrast is definitely going to bring your eyes straight to those two black dots. And I guess I could do a quick pass on the iris. So for the actual color of the eye, I'm grabbing this green. But when I'm laying it out, I'm going to be laying it very softly. And actually, you know what, that's a bit too saturated. There we go. So then as I lay it out, I'm going to press really, really softly. And I'm capturing, or I'm laying it in the bottom of the iris. Because the, the light source that we kind of have in place, since the neck is in shadow, that means that the light source is coming somewhat from overhead. So the bottom of the iris being uh, convex would catch the light. And that's why we wouldn't do the entire eye. We would just get more of that bottom part of the iris. And once we lay out the white part where the reflection is, it'll really round out the eye. And this is just one of those tricks that it makes the eye look so much better really quickly and very simply. Alright, so then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do the hair. So I'm going to make a new layer for this one and pretty much I'm going to draw the shadow part of the hair first and then draw right over it with the hair that would be falling in front. And like I said, I'm working with the circle brush so that I'm not worrying about how defined or how perfect it looks. Because right now I'm just trying to block out all the colors. And then I could take my eraser tool and erase a lot of that excess that is falling over onto the skin area that we have. And then in areas where the hair would be casting a bit of a shadow, I'm going to just lightly graze it with the darker brown. All right. So now the next thing that I'm going to quickly lay out is the red portion of the face. And the color that I'm going to choose and if you can see it on the color picker, is definitely more red, but it's still lighter in value than it may look. 
because this will it since it's lower in value than the skin color it'll definitely give that look that it's a, a bit darker and I'm gonna just lay it over the nose and the cheeks and this is another one of those tricks that um, I learned through James Gurney color and light where he talks about different uh, parts of the face have a color region to them so the top area is usually in yellow the middle area is in red and the bottom area has a blue tint to it and that's not saying that you should go overboard with adding those uh, colors but it's just something to kind of keep in the back of your mind of something you could add to it to give it some more life and color to your image And it's really nice working uh, like this where you're not focusing too much on uh, being perfect with laying out your colors because then you can just kind of relax and just know that the detailing part will be for later on. So then now I'm just kind of filling in the rest of the areas that need to be filled. So those uh, the eyelashes and then for the actual hair and the eyebrows, I need to lay out the colors. There we go. So then for the eyebrows, I'm going to dark, grab that darker brown. Just give a quick pass over. And then the last thing that I'm going to do before I get into doing the specifics of the facial features, the hair, and the outfit, is I'm just going to lay out a basic outfit because right now she has uh, no color for her baker outfit. So I'm just going to lay this darker green first, put that there, and then uh, these kind of represent the, the colors in shadow and the colors in light. So in this lighter green that I'm going to add now will be the areas that are falling into uh, the light, so the areas that aren't being uh, dropped in shadow. And I'm basing that on her head shape in the way that I have the neck completely in shadow. So since I have the light coming from overhead, I'm imagining that her rather large head is casting a shadow right on the clothes. So in my mind, I'm kind of casting like a cast shadow circle on her clothes. And then as I draw the light on, I'm not going to be drawing inside <clears throat> of that cast shadow circle. And I'm going to do the same for the apron part. So I'm first going to draw everything in shadow. I probably should move this up. So you know what, I'm going to go ahead and just make this a touch smaller. There we go so that I can push this a little bit lower. All right, so then I would grab my light color, and this is the area that would be falling under the light. And then for the apron, I'm also gonna add not so much a highlight, but that's what I'm gonna be calling it, but it's not gonna be like a pure white. Because sometimes when you hear highlight, you think that it has to be a pure white. But for this, I'm just going to add almost a touch of yellow. It's almost looking a bit like a lime green. And I'm also making it a touch more saturated. And then I'm going to lay that on, but I'm going to lay it on not quite as hard. And then since I kind of like the way that that looks, I'm going to bring some of that color into the eyeball as well. Or the iris, I should say give it some of that shine. So this is another way where you're interplaying between color balance. You have the same color used in different areas of the character. And if you want more on like color like balancing and the fundamentals behind it, there's the getting started color tutorial that I will link in the description below. But these are the basic steps on laying out the f kind of foundations for what we will work upon. And then since I'm still using my soft brush, what I could do 
is I'm going to just go ahead and merge those layers together with Command E and Command or er, Control E on a PC. And using my eraser, let's say I wanted that nice hard edge, then I would change the hardness to 100%, and I could go through and edge it out. And you'll see how that'll instantly give it more of that 3D space to it, where right now it's looking just a bit blurry. But since I'm not looking to fully detail anything yet, I'm just going to grab a soft edge eraser and erase it that way. And there we go. So now that we have our color foundations all laid out, let's go ahead and see what it looks like in grayscale by turning on that hue and saturation layer on. And you can see when I turn it on, our values are having a nice contrast right now. So the skin tones are a bit lighter, where the hairs and the clothes, the hair and the clothes are a bit darker in value, giving it that nice contrast, and the focus is going to be pulled toward the face. So this is almost exactly what we wanted. And then as we get into detailing, I want to make sure that I continue to work with these values that we already placed. So in the next tutorial, I'm going to take you through detailing the eyes, the nose, the mouth, and the ears.